Welcome to Switch It Up. You morning more, edition. You get more this and is more morning. My, every time. my voice is kind of like we don't get up this early normally. What well, she does. Okay, I can't put us in the same box. She does. I don't. So it's not super early. It's like eight. <laughs> That's RV life. Okay. You don't have to tell them all. Your <laughs> I know. I don't have to tell you. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Switch It Up. We do appreciate you coming. We have something very unique, very special, something different today that I'm looking forward to sharing with all of you. Wouldn't you say? Is this unique and different? For our channel. It is. We get comfy. Well, I don't know. Our channel is just it's kind of everywhere. different all the time. So today we're talking about Sheila. solar. Yes, but you know, you can think about it as all the geek Gizmo. out stuff and gizmo stuff, but to me, it just, it what it does is it expands my opportunities and options. And options. Mm -hmm. Options are really good when we go back to see family. So what yeah. we're going to do is, I'm not going to get super technical on this. I might geek out a little bit and you'll see why in a second. But let's roll the intro, come back and share with them why and our needs for type of solar. And it's not going to be like this crazy. We're, we're thinking we're kind of normal in what our solar needs are. As normal as normal can be for us. Roll the intro. I'm filtering. <laughs> Roll the intro. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. They didn't know where they would go, but it's gotta be better than staying home. They switched it up. They switched it up. Boy. It went fast, didn't it? It's like we didn't even move. Well, you did because you have a fidget problem. Yeah, I do have a fidget problem. So let's talk about our solar needs. Like I said, to me, solar gives us options. Um, mm -hmm. There's two things that drive me crazy in the RV life that, well, maybe not crazy. That's your job. Uh -huh. But there's other things that, uh -huh. that irritate me. One is when we're boondocking, because we have a residential fridge, our generator kicks on about one, two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, it's that's our generator and our bed's right above it. Actually, that generator's on Sheila's side of the bed, so it's even worse. It's not horrible. I think what it does is then after the generator kicks off, then I worry, did everything else turn back on? Did uh -huh. the refrigerator turn back on? So I'm not going back to sleep peacefully. But that's like a minor thing, not a big deal. What's more irritating is when I want to go back and see our family with the diesel prices right now, it doesn't make sense to keep trekking, trekking right, back, back and, and forth, forth, back and forth. So I would love to be able to still hit the grandkids, um, birthday parties, that sort of thing. And so if I could just leave Fiona mm -hmm. for just a little bit now and know that she's going to be okay. You've, you've seen how we've kind of navigated this in the past where Sheila's found like some really good boondocking locations or, uh, and boondockers welcome mm -hmm. or harvest hosts or Yep, and those links are down below if you're if you're needing those types of memberships. Yep. But that was one of her solutions. She found somebody that was gracious enough to let us park and then ran an extension cord to the rig for us so we could go back and see our family for five days. This is always, if you're buying a rig and you have a residential fridge and not like the one you switch over from propane to electricity, it's always in the back of your mind if you're wanting to go back and see family. We have solar. We have one solar panel, came on our rig, it's 300 watts. And then we, in our first week, we burnt up the two batteries <laughs> that they gave us because nobody told us you can't run them down to zero and then charge them and run them down to zero. And if you know anything, which we didn't, we did that and destroyed the batteries. We sure did. <laughs> we did. And so that left us this example of going to a battery place, which this guy was hilarious in itself. Um, that was like one of our earlier videos within a month. And he, he gave us, or well, he didn't give us anything. He sold us for basically AGM, AGM type batteries. Yep, yep. What happened to grandpa? Grandpa, grandpa, grandpa owes grandpa. me 50 bucks. <laughs> Damn so you grandpa. shouldn't throw his name around here when you come here because he owes me 50. Well, he told me to come and get Are a good deal. Are you going to pay the $50? We did the eight ball. You said yes. $50 because you think there's, there's, I'm poor. <laughs> I'm retired and I have a lot of money. I'm not retired. And I'm not poor. And I'm not poor. So I'm right. There's a cat. So we can do AGM. Okay. okay. See, we're educating our people. Okay. Hang up the phone because okay. you're about to cry. Yep. And that's what we've been surviving on. But they only last for so long. The generator kicks on, charges them up. Yep. And it's which, been ongoing. Which has served our needs. But at, for this first year, this first year, we've just kind of figured out what 
we what, need. What do we need? Like, we don't need the big 1200 watts of solar on top and the 22 big lithium ion battery. We don't need that. No. What we need is, is a system that when we go back to see family, we could park it somewhere. The solar system will charge the batteries, run the refrigerator and our essentials like our uh, internet is always running uh, so we can monitor our cameras or we can turn things on and off. So the essentials that can run for four or five days while we're not there and we don't have to plug in. Yeah, we're not going boondocking off the grid mm -hmm. for a month. That's not our style. So this it just helped us figure out what we need and, and now we have a solution. We have a solution. Enduro powered batteries. Yes. Now there's a story behind this and Harrison is actually the owner and he is flying into where we are having our huddle because he heard about some of the stuff we were doing and we shared with him our ideas and thoughts. And after lengthy several different conversations, he goes, I think I'd like to help out. And so this is a very unique and special situation for Switch It Up. And I, I wanna say that and it's all because of you. And the reason I say that is, is when you hit the like button and you, and you leave a comment or you, you subscribe, the subscriber numbers and stuff that help, well, when a brand or something is looking for a, a, somebody to partner with, it comes down to you. Honestly, that's what it is, is that they look at all of us as a community and say, hey, can that help our brand? Would we represent their brand? And that's a testament to you guys following along. So it is a blessing that this is happening and we hope that we can give you just the essentials for solar and not the grandiose plan, but what will fit our needs. Yeah. So that's what we're doing today. Because maybe what we need is just, a, you know, is I think what we need is probably what the average, you know, the average yeah. person doesn't need a giant well, system. Some people do if they're full timing more, but most yeah, of us- Maybe full timing well, off the grid. Yes, and a lot of people love to do that. Yep but we're kind of look we're on concrete for goodness sakes and but like our concrete. our needs are different our needs are going across and spending the night in a bass pro shop parking lot or right. a, or somewhere where we don't want to run the generator and, and we are going we have a couple of boondocking days mm -hmm. on, in our future and so this is just going to provide that extra peace of mind so i'm super excited to meet harrison mm -hmm. and for him to come out and to for us to learn more about and we're installing enduro power batteries today and some solar panels and we'll just pick his brain and i'll ask the dumb questions because I don't know anything about solar, honestly. You hate electricity. I hate that, electricity. That's the one thing you do not like. In fact, yes. you remember that time you installed batteries and I thought you about killed yeah. yourself. And I didn't get it on tape because it shorted out. The wire hit the side of the box, sparks arced everywhere. It scared the pee out of me. But yeah, we're not Almost doing that today. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what you're getting today. We truly appreciate that. If this video is for you, great. If you don't, not you don't care about solar, don't worry. We make another video in a couple of days. Well, I'm sure so today tune. won't only be about solar because there's always I know, something. I know. I got that something. Happens. I got stuff everywhere over here. <laughs> We're gonna wait for Harrison to show up, and we'll show you some of the behind the scenes as well. <laughs> Sheila's looking at this. So all the stuff was um, basically shipped in, and he's bringing other stuff with him. So she's going. Do we need all of this stuff? Like, it's a lot of stuff. We have two 200 amp hour batteries. So we're gonna have 400 amp hours. What exactly does that mean? I don't know. Sheila, do you know where that meter thing is that we can share yes, with them? So Harrison, um, before we started talking about what we would need for our setup, he's like, he sent us an email. He's very gracious. And he said, this is, you need to buy this. And he sent a link, it was on Amazon. He goes, I need you to plug everything in that is running all the time when you're sitting in specific locations so we know what the usage is going to be so we can kind of come up with a plan. We bought it and it was cheap. It was like 15, 18 bucks. And it's basically, it's got a plug-in on the back. Sorry, like lighting's not too whoopy here, but there's a plug-in on the back. You plug it in, then you plug the device in and then that tells you how many watts you're using. So we went through pretty much everything, right? Yeah, just kind of like, there's so many things that just use a little bit of power mm -hmm. even when the rigs aren't using batteries. Like yeah. it just... Our internet and the even refrigerator, TV, the TV's, TV's on. on. Yeah, I mean, they call not, those... It's not on, but what is it, phantom power? Phantom or power. I think somebody called it vampire power for a while where it sucks stuff off. And you don't even realize yeah. it. And but if not, a vampire bit me, I would realize it. 
Would you though? They kind of <laughs> nibble. They're nibblers. <laughs> How do you know this? I don't know. It's my own thought. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> I digress. Anyway. We really are off topic. So we bought this device. Uh, I don't even know exactly what it's called. I'll try to see if I can find the link and put it in the description of this video. And that's how we started out determining what we were going to need for power for him to help us guide us through. And that's another thing is, is that he will guide you through your system by asking you a lot of questions. So make sure that you choose the right amount of battery power you're going to need. So that's pretty cool. Before we get started, I guess we should have shared how we come to what we need. So we did that. I'm not Bob Vila or anything. I'm not like the, hey, and that's, that's Harold. Say hi, Harold. What this looks like to me is like a whole bunch of boys having fun today. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have some fun. Yeah. It's gonna be some work, but it's all right. And then we'll go over kind of like the solar panel stuff later uh, as part of the package, but he's gonna walk us through on that as well. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, now I'm gonna grab some coffee. I'm gonna sit down and just wait because I ain't touching nothing until he shows up. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> How you Good doing? Good to see you. Good too. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. Hang Likewise. out with us. All right, the man, the myth, the legend, Harrison Smitty with Enduro Power Batteries. This is your baby, your brainchild, right? Uh, it is, definitely. It, it is, it is. And I am very fortunate that we're going to be doing some amazing stuff here on the rig today. This is Fiona, by the way. Did you know what our rig's name was? Did you know it's Snooze a thing? Or... Do you, do you, he has his own fifth wheel. Did you name your fifth wheel? I'm not a namer. I don't name my truck. Well, okay. It. So down below, we're going to name his fifth wheel. We'll do that. How's okay. that sound? Does Sounds that sound good. Fair? I'm up for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Enduro power batteries. And this is fueling your adventures is your tagline. Am I, did I get it right? It is, you know, whether it's RVing, boating, you know, golf cart, you know. How did you, let's, let's do this real quick. So just kind of introduce. How did you get involved with doing the batteries? And then you're doing a lot with like fishing currently. You're now coming into yeah. the RV space and you're really branched out and doing amazing things. So kind of give us like a little backstory. Yeah, yeah. Well, first off, Enduro Power, we're focused on the RV market, the fishing market, and right. also the golf cart market. Uh, I personally have one of the two co-founders of Enduro Power. Uh, I bring over a decade experience in the battery industry uh, right. in the alkaline side and it transferred into lithium iron phosphate in the last three or so years. Um, but, you know, me personally, I've been in, around, in and around 12 volts all my life, whether it's car audio, to, uh, RC cars, right. um, toy trains, car stereos. And then you um, got into the RV space, got your own RV, and you're like, hey man, this is, there's something here. Yeah, so take away, you know, my personal interest uh, combined with, you know, my knowledge of consumer goods for the past two decades and in the battery industry specifically in the last decade. Just wanted to set out to bring, you know, a, a great alternative solution to people like yourself. Yep, and then we reached out, we were talking back and forth through multiple things, and he was like, what are you and Sheila truly trying to, you know, approach? And you came up with a solution and you're like, okay, these are your needs. And this is, this is, I think where you shine. This is a little attention to listening to what you may need and then kind of saying, okay, this is where you can focus and then help guiding that whole thing with your batteries. Yeah, yeah. You guys ultimately wanted to be able to run certain devices yes. and your fr refrigerator, which is residential. Right. One, while you're, you're full time, well, we're going to see. But also, if you're gone for three days, four yep. days, you have your rig set up to where you can still keep it running. Right. You have the ability to auto start your generator uh -huh. if you needed to, but you don't want to have to do nope. that as often. So, your goal was what type of battery setup and anything else do I need to do to accomplish yes. that? So um, together we've kind of worked through we, with your uh, energy audit and stuff like that. Right. We figured out like, you know, how many additional solar panels to the, the original 300 watt that you had do we need to add on to complement the battery bank to, to accomplish your goals. So now, he's not, now, now you gotta go, if, if you're gonna go to their website, they're not gonna have solar panels. That's not your focus. Your focus is basically your power, the batteries themselves. Sure. But then you actually guide and say, okay, here's the other things that the components you're gonna need to make this system work. Yeah, definitely. Right? And it's not necessarily on your website because you're not a one-stop all, but you're 
the one person that's going to say, okay, here's what here's what you need to focus. You know, I'd like to say that, um, yeah, we are focused on lithium battery technology. Right. So we don't offer just one skew or two skews. Mm -hmm. We offer a range of batteries to to fit your needs. So right. we always say it's better to have fewer physical batteries than uh, multiple smaller batteries. And right. so that's why we have a different range of, of products. Uh, we are continuing to add right. new products to our line as well. And so because that's our focus, we don't have the one-stop shop for no. a full off-grid system. Currently. We do, we do have maybe one we, day. No, we are focused on battery. <laughs> However, come, the battery is the core to any system. It is. And so we're very knowledgeable in understanding you know, systems and we can guide you in the direction of where you need to go. We right. also have referrals to great partners that, um, you know, can be that really good shopper. referrals actually. So, um, but we're more than happy to kind of, you know, get people started yeah. just like we did with you kind of saying, Hey, here's our goal. I like to say, it's kind of like we can be a little bit of like a financial advisor. Yeah. We're not going to do the investing, do the install, give you all the equipment, right. but we can definitely give you great advice. I think what happens is, is when we're starting down this path of looking for lithium, I'm having a great hair day. Um, <laughs> the thing, <laughs> he doesn't know what to expect when he's videoing with it, but the thing, what to expect is, is that you have a lot of questions. And I'm going to ask questions of him as we're going through this so he can kind of fill us in on why he chose that after listening to Sheila and I's personal things that we were wanting to accomplish. And I think that's the goal here is, is allowing you to see that. You may not get all the bells and whistles of exactly because every install is going to be different. Every need is a little bit different and we'll kind of go from there. And then yeah. you can have an idea in the background of what Enduro Power is like. Yeah. And I'd say one other thing, um, obviously I'm here helping you with this yeah. install and, and you have a friend that's helping out as well. Myself and other people on the team, we do installs every once in a while to kind of stay up to speed on right. the latest equipment, technologies, techniques. So when we're talking to you on the phone right. or email. But obviously you can't fly all over the United yeah, States no, to do it. can't do that. Can't but do we it. do it because it allows us to be able to efficiently talk to our customers. Same thing with uh, bass boats and kayaks. Yeah. Uh, we spent middle, uh, multiple uh, time with different boat riggers, installers, right. learning all their techniques, and then we can pass that on to our customers. So Instead of just selling a battery. All right, now. We're gonna jump into the nuts and bolts. Looks like we're gonna start placing some solar up there to see where it's gonna go. And then all the bells and whistles. I, I honestly have no clue what is going on. But that's, I mean, you guys watch the channel, you guys pretty much know that's the way it works. You ready? Yep. Oh yeah, he's ready. <laughs> he needs to be running a marathon soon, but he, he blew out his knee a little bit. He's gotta get a little repair going because he's fueling his adventure. <laughs> all right, Harrison, I'll leave you alone. Let's get going. So on the 395 MS, if anybody has one, then you know that your storage usually ends about this far in. So I actually bumped out and moved everything over and added a wall to the back so I can actually have more space. And I can crawl in there and it's like five, six feet back now. Yeah. And here's the bad part. The controller I need is behind that wall that I added. So now I have to remove all I did to get to this one controller so we can put this back there. Didn't even think about that. What is that? So this is the converter. It's, yeah, you have to have a lithium, you have to have a converter uh, yes. that can charge lithium. Well, that's true. So when you're doing solar, you're gonna have to have a lithium powered charger. Right, so we gotta put that back there. Initially we had the one solar panel, it's 300 watts, and through our time together on the phone, he had me take pictures and send a bunch of measurements so then he could kind of figure stuff out. So now the goal is, is that we cut off the tops of the boxes for the solar panels so we can use those as a template for layout. A little tidbit, a little nugget. How close or doesn't really matter how close they are? Yeah, they can be right on. And then this is the port. So yeah. that that port is what we'll use to go down. That port, or at least that area. That would be my first recommendation. And we can put it anywhere in the roof. I've got enough cable to run anywhere. You're leaving, you know, a blank landscape for anything in the future. Right. Now, even I think the spot here, if you utilize it, you wouldn't utilize it any other way either, because right. you've got that antenna that's blocking you. So quick. in theory, 
by the way he's laying it out, if we wanted to in the future, we could have, what, 1,800 watts of solar? Uh, we could add, you have 300 today. Um, we're gonna put 800 on. Right. You could put 2,400 more on. Of on the way it's laid out with using the panels that we're using. He's thinking future. But. That was like. That's that, not your goal. No, somebody's goal, that could be somebody's goal yeah. on a momentum. That, I think it ha helps laying it all out so you can have an idea of where it's gonna be. And that is considering that the 300 watt panel is mounted in its place and not moving it. Yeah. If you wanted to change the stock panel, you, can move it. you could maybe have a little bit more flexibility. Okay. Now we could just blink our eyes like I dream a genie and then it's all installed. Woo, easy. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. <laughs> Did you know, because I didn't, you must keep your solar panels covered. Because the minute they expose the light, they start charging. You can get a nice little shock. When installing your solar panels, make sure that they're covered. We had an original one up here, so I used a basically a drop cloth and then put cardboard over the top of it while he's installing all the wires. But they've been covered the whole time. They've never been in ex any sun the, uh, prior to us installing. Like so I did not know this little tip of information. Driver. All right, everyone's gonna ask, how many solar panels, what did we end up with? We ended up with four, four. 200 watts. Correct. And then I, we have our 300, so we're at 1100 watts. We had had a discussion about is, do we need this much solar? panels and basically we really don't but you're always saying more is better yeah, in a lot of situations. Yeah 300 if you put uh, two up here you would have gone to 700 right and based on what your what our preferences are what we're using. Well you're well yeah what you're trying to do as right. far as running your fridge and stuff the, that would have been su sufficient right there's somebody told me one a couple years ago you can never have too much solar right. and in this case the solar charge controller allowed us to put two more panels on right and it's just extra insurance as far so as as, as people are trying to figure out what you're going to need you don't think that you have to go solar the whole roof you don't need to do that depending now if you're wanting to run everything and be on 50 amp and that's a whole different level that's not the level we're going with i think this is pretty adequate of a package if somebody's starting out with solar and you're wanting to accomplish what we're trying to do i think this is pretty good on yeah. that scenario played out you're just trying to keep your battery bank you know completely fuller yeah. you know that overnight or in your case the couple days where you're away from the rig right you want to make sure the battery stays charged enough to run your okay. inverter run your fridge this, now this does it here's the next question you're going to ask but todd are you going to angle them and ours are flat what do we say about there's there's many theories on angling your solar right and it's basically from your morning time to your evening time you're missing this cusp am i wrong in this assess assessment there's that but really angling is more definitely in the winter months when okay. the, the sun's really low um you definitely if you want to get production you need to angle towards the sun right. for full timers that's a consideration um in your application we chose to over panel right so the two solar panels would have done it so it's a put four it's, on. it's adapting to that to compensate the angling in your application. and here's yeah. the thing think about it if we're full timing and we're driving around everywhere we're in different locations different angles all the time i think it would be i, I don't know if you could ever efficiently get to that proper angle you'd have to be adjusting stuff every time you move yeah, and there's there's a lot of park. There's a couple guys bringing out some uh, you know actuators, you know, the yeah. move panels up and down. There's a lot of things you can do if you if you're thinking about that. But your application nah. over paneling was the way to do it. Yep. So there's the other reason we actually added a couple panels versus just staying basic. It's to compensate for the angle stuff. No, but it's looking great. It's fabulous. All right, my man Harrison. He just. He just wrapped it all up and was giving me all the down low on the apps and everything like that. It is it is amazing to see. He spent two and a half days, it's not a normal thing, and we truly appreciate everything. I know we've, we've been running around a lot because we're at the huddle and, and stuff, so it's pretty cool to see what you've tied together. You feel good about it though, right? 
definitely. Yeah, I mean, I'm, when, too, I'm a perfectionist, which I, is he good is, and bad. <laughs> we were doing this, and he kept moving the solar panels about a sixteenth of an inch, and I said, "I'm going to put them on diagonals," and he was like, "Just leave it alone." Yeah. So, but it worked out. Yeah. We had a little setbacks trying to figure out the wires and stuff, but it all, it all, and 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 so if you're around and you're looking for solar, I want you just to reach out to Endure. He will, he will walk you through questions that you may have. I mean, that's kind of like your heart, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Like we don't have all the equipment. We're not going to sell equipment. I, I, I kind of say like almost like a financial advisor. Right. If you're looking for a little bit of advice, you know, we definitely want you to kind of, if you're doing a DIY system, educate yourself, but we can help, you know, piece some of those missing pieces together. Happy to do that. Um, yeah. And when it comes to any system you might do, um, the batteries are the core of it, right? Yep. So, you know, you're going to call up and say, hey, and that, what are the settings? That comes down to your consumption levels and then you kind of start pairing that to try to figure out what's your best needs. Exactly. Yeah. And, then, and like I said, I think this fits our best needs currently. And now if we become like this boondocking thing and we want to do a lot, we can always call them up and say, hey, we're going to swing by Colorado. We yeah, need to, exactly. some advice. So, so for example, you were, once we get all set up with a battery monitor, we're able to see that he was consuming about 20 to 25 amps per hour right. with his residential fridge and a, a lot of other uh, DC loads that he wants to run or a few things actually through your right. inverter. And so that was the whole reason that um, to put this in was to basically have the battery bank to right. run that and the solar to you know re offset offset yeah. it and um basically it told us that you know the amount of solar that we're doing basically we were covering that plus putting uh energy back into the battery bank so he would go all day producing power right. and then at night you have a deficit but he's got enough in the battery right. bank to, to support himself it. for the night blessings blessings all right hope you guys enjoyed this i'm not the techno guru person that's why Harrison is somebody that you can call. So appreciate it. I'll put all the information down below. Thanks, man. Yeah. And you know what we say on this channel when we're done? He doesn't know. I don't. You don't know? <laughs> I don't. We say this. We're out. All right. It's been probably almost about five, six days uh, since we finished that video. And it's time for some Q&A because I already know you're going to have a couple questions about how much of the cost, what exactly did we do. So we're going to do a quick Q&A so I can go over all the components, tell you the cost of everything associated. So let's just jump in underneath and let's go over that real quick. All right, so I've educated myself a little bit. So let's just talk about the components um, as they sit. As far as like the solar panels that are up on top, those four sol solar panels were around $236 each. Which is around $944. That doesn't include some of the wiring that has to be that you have to purchase separately to make sure everything's hooked up uh, to run everything down below. But that's the gist of just the solar panels themselves. Next comes you have to change out your inverter converter to uh, work with lithium batteries. Most of the rigs that have been built prior to 2021 uh, generally just have the normal inverter converter that comes with the rig that deals with regular batteries you have to change that out because it has to deal with something that with the lithium being charged at a higher rate so that's why that has to be changed out one of those generally runs around 236 dollars the one that we put in is right around that price tag i did not realize this not a lot of the newer rigs sorry i'm kneeling on rocks and it's not very pleasant a lot of the newer rigs uh have the inverter converters that can deal straight with that so you might not have that charge component that need, you need to be replaced let's just jump into the system itself the enduro power batteries which are fabulous right those are running about twelve hundred dollars a piece now they did give us a promo code which is pretty neat and it's going to be down in the description i believe it's like five percent off i am also going to add all of these components on uh down below in our amazon cart i'm just going to create like a solar folder that you can click on don't fret if you can't remember all of this because you'll be able to click on all the different components that we've installed these batteries are right around the 1200 dollars a piece mark um, that's 200 amp hours each battery so we have 400 amp hours again that's just because he wanted to make sure when we were gone if we had four or five cloudy days and it wasn't getting enough charge that he wanted to make sure that we'd have enough time we cannot run currently the way things are set up we, we don't have 
the big MPT controller that we could run our air conditioners, things like that. That wasn't our goal. Our goal is basically at nighttime, we can run the generator during the day to run air conditioners and at nighttime, shut everything down, run fans, do all that stuff. Everything's gonna run just fine through the night into the next day. If we're boondocking, we can run the generator on hot days to uh, do all the 50 amp stuff. So. That's kind of the transition is what we were looking at this for. Okay, number two, you're gonna see that you have these things called smart solar controllers. So we have one, which is the 100 by 50. Let me show you that. That 100 by 50 uh, solar charge controller, what that is, is it's that's running our current factory installed 300 watt solar panel that's up there. The next one, is the 150 by 85 and that's running the additional four solar panels the first one the mppt 100 by 50 is around 320 bucks somewhere in there and then the other one the 150 by 85 is around that 600 i believe i wrote it down 697 dollars you have to have those to basically run your solar panels that are up on the roof we actually have two breakers installed uh, to help shut those down when we need to work on things up on the roof so that's kind of neat the next thing is going to be your victron energy source these are bus bars that go across and those bus bars are basically it's it's just a clean version you can get cheaper versions of these it's not a necessity by any means and it would affect your your overall cost on what you're doing those run around 222 dollars each so that's 444 dollars and those are just exactly where all of your energy components will be coming into so you can distribute power. Now that could be the components of like, you're gonna use your, your Lippert hydraulic stabilizers that come up and down. Uh, it could be a number of things that you have. Those are gonna be going right onto those bus bars and you can link multiple of those together. So that's pretty neat that comes into play. The last thing that is a component that is really big and it's kind of tucked away it's probably something that you will use constantly like I've been using battery monitor now these battery monitors run around range around two hundred dollars and we did not install it inside the rig we're just running it straight off our phone because it can be done Bluetooth enabled so now I can just pick up my phone check out what's going on with the batteries and how they are handling the current and ins and outs of the solar coming in and distribution of power in essence so I have an idea of where things sit all of those combined which is between your your charger controllers your inverter your converter your batteries everything that you've seen the solar plus wires and everything we're right around fifty six hundred dollars total for everything which again I think that's a great solar package setup now that does not include installation I imagine since this is an upgraded system to a current solar package that was already on our rig, I imagine it makes it easier to do the upgrades. So I'm thinking, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, I imagine labor might be anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 uh, if you had to pay that. So that probably makes this system right around a $7,500 system with 400 amp hours. And again, you might not need 400 amp hours. You really need to use that whole system of where you're looking to find out what you're truly using in your power and what your goals and needs will be. The cool part is, is the way this is set up, there's a plenty of room in here that we could add another two batteries. So we could actually have 800 amp hours in this bay pretty easily due to the fact that Enduro Power has a great setup with the 200 amp hour um, system that they have in their batteries. So keep that all in mind they're lighter by far so it's less weight distribution and Harrison did a great job you're gonna ask me hey what did you do for your inverter that you're running everything on we still stayed with our factory inverter up here which is uh, 2,000 watts that came from Grand Design and that's enough to run the things that we're going to need to run uh, we don't again this our goals were not to run all of our big things our goals were to meet the needs of just going overnight you know somewhere if we're traveling and not have to run the generator and have that peace of mind as we leave the rig somewhere as we fly home this definitely is a huge blessing and peace of mind so if you're looking for a system like this if you're looking for information i would definitely think about calling enduro power and find out what their options are and where they can lead you in the tips and they can 
send you wherever. Again, in this description down below, you can click on our Amazon store. I have a solar area there with everything that I just named with the pricing. And if you have any questions whatever, whatsoever, you can give them a shout. And hopefully this helps you out when you're trying to figure out your solar needs. I think it, I think I would have enjoyed a video like this instead of going in depth, way in depth on installing because I'm not the in depth installing guy. I'm just trying to figure out what I need and what the costs are gonna be, quite honestly. So hopefully that all helps. And if you have any other questions, uh, leave a comment down below. Or if you have any, if you're reading the comments and you have knowledge, help the people asking the questions because you might know something that they just need at that moment. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you soon.